Hello everyone, it's Jules by Jude here. I'm going to start off with my camera down here real low before we get started on anything and do a little bit of an explanation and get a little bit of a close-up. Now, what you're looking at is my version of Turtle Soup Beads, Susan her name is, the last cane I seen her do with translucent clay and white clay and pearl clay. And she did a kaleidoscope cane and what you're looking at is my version but stretched out quite a bit. In fact, it's number one which is the lowest setting on mine possible. My machine goes down to one the thinnest and nine the highest. So I've stretched that cane out to the lowest or the thinnest. Now, uh, what I'm about to do is to show you how I did Jasma. I did her uh, watercolor scheme and uh, I watched her tutorial and these are a couple of beads I've already done and I'm going to show you how I did those. These particular ones I believe were done with the alcohol ink then that's what I'll be using shortly and this is just a plain white uh, primo white sheet that the uh, alcohol inks will be going on so I'm going to shut this off and show you how to do it but I wanted to give you a close-up so really what happened was I had this desire to do both and I ended okay I'm back let me show you what I have in front of me. This here is going to go to the, to the wayside for now. These are, uh, oops, these are not those. Sorry about that. These are the alcohol pads that go to the stamp. And this is how easy this will be for us today. Now, I tried this already a couple different ways and I let's get started. It won't take long for it to dry, but what I would like to do is this is a spray. This is a Dilutions Mica Spray. Also bought it to Michaels. Now, if you watch, I'm going to do is put this down because I like the pink color that it, it shot off for me that before. So I like to keep with that. I'll let it set a second. Um, what I did notice about working with these inks on polymer clays is that uh, when you apply these inks directly and see this is uh, directly but it's in a spray form and it, it's probably watered down a bit but if you don't take some of it off somehow you'll end up with a very like a, a dot so I don't want that I want it to be smeared around and all that good stuff so this little stamp and this little pad all you do here is well let's put some let's see here, let's put some yellow on and do that it's fourth of july i know i'm not outside watching fireworks i did that yesterday so i'll get to hear all of that lovely banging and the noise in the background and uh we've also seen the concert with the ton uh, petty tribute it was really nice okay so we got a little bit of gold or yellow going on but that's yellow but I'm gonna put some green on here right on the same pad here I hope you can see that all right this allows you to go ahead and do a little bit of stamping I really do like this. This came out really well for me before. So, and I also have used this with my dominoes. And I can spray a little bit more pink on here at will. That's what I like about that too. Where did my tissue go? Oh, here it is. Um, so you get that blend in there. I like it a lot. Now I'm going to put a dark, some darker colors because as Samantha 
I also like to do her version of the lighter colors first and the darker colors second. So let's just see what this blue. I Keep in mind too, I also still have on this pad, I still have some of my other colors, my inks in there. So um, keep that in mind. That's pretty good. Not bad. spray going on there. The thing about alcohol is you can spread it out with more alcohol. There's a lot you can do. Let's see here. Is it dark green? Where's that turquoise at? I don't think I dug the turquoise. Let's do a little bit of this. This looks like a um, Sometimes it's really hard to see what the colors are. I actually didn't find it. To put some glasses on to see that baby. All right, let's see what happens here. Another thing is, I like to do one or two first, so just in case I don't like it, I don't have to worry about trying to remove all of it. And um, I can also dab this <clears throat> pad onto my um, paper towel and take some of this ink off my pad you know stamp it out a little bit there otherwise it's going to turn to mud and we don't want that now that was a darker color so let's see here I'm going to let this set just a little bit. Oh, that was a big boom, wasn't it? Let's see here. Get this for just a second with that paint on it. So as you can see, you can do all sorts of different uh, colorations on here devise your own um, color scheme. This looks looking a little dark, but I'm about to put some uh, put a little bit of uh, alcohol, straight alcohol on here. And if you pick that up, A little bit. Yeah. There we go. Took some of the darker alcohols off of it. Lightened it up a little bit. It's got a lot of green going on and I'm not sure I can do much about that at this point. To get anything too much lighter. Hitting it with that spray. All right. So that's what we got that we're already working with. I might put a little bit more alcohol on that. I think I can lighten it up a little bit more. Alcohol inks are fun. They're easy. You can play with them. Make them do what they want. You want them to do got a little bit of even some ink on that translucent. It's probably going to do nothing but tint it. Tint it a little bit more for me so and that's fine. That's not a big deal. Alright.
Sounds like bombs are going off, huh? All right, I just want to take some of that brown off. It's looking too dark for me. It's going to be a primarily green color. There's not much I can be doing about that because you should have plenty of your light on there before you go ahead with this. So we're going to do it. It's going to be, you know, highlighted pretty much. It looks like uh, green. Now I'm going to stretch this over top. We already talked about what this is and how it got to be. And uh, I suggest very strongly that you watch both of those young ladies' videos. And that was, again, Jessima, who is, her name is Samantha, and S Susan from Turtle Soup Beads. There are two videos help me create this. So if you're enjoying this, then you go right ahead and check them both out, and you'll see them on their channel. One is a kaleidoscope cane, which is done with some translucent, makes it look a little lacy and whatnot. And I also did Samantha's watercolor, a version of it. And now I have this. Now it's got some bubbles and stuff in it. So I'm going to go and I'm going to set it on my uh, medium. Okay. And I'm going to run this through my pasta machine. Hopefully, it will take all of the um, bubbles out. There we go. There we are. And that's nice and pretty. Other than that, it's basically the same. I just used my own colors. And um, now what I want to do is I noticed earlier that the longer I let this set on top, the more the translucent cane blended in with it. And you could see the colors a little bit more when I on the finished version of this. So that's probably what I'm going to do at this point. I'm just going to let this sit for a while and kind of just be together. <laughs> just be together. So, and then I will come back. I have beads baking away that have to do with the other uh, portion of this, which is, this is the one I did earlier. And it's done the same way, except for the colors. The uh, other version has more of the blues and the pinks in it. And yes, I, I did think that was it's nice, and I think the green is going to come out well as, as well, hopefully. And this is kind of what this is with the translucent. Exact same thing, different colors, okay? I got some more pieces out. I'll bring the camera down later so you can see them up close. This is coming out uh, pretty well for me. Uh, I really like the watercolor effects. Now, last I left you, I had... Uh, some beads in the oven. These are not cooked that you see down here. These are. These are baked. And I looked up on the internet different uh, ways of baking your beads. Okay. So I found a tutorial that described putting your beads that you want baked into baking soda or cornstarch. This is cornstarch. The problem with the baking soda was gritty and uh, salty. Uh, and that's not a test of mine, so I'm not going to swear by that. I'm going to tell you that that's hearsay. But I can tell you that I used the cornstarch and these are my beads. And 
for what I wanted them to look like, they look great. They are the watercolor technique um, that we spoke about earlier. So when I bring the camera down, I'll show them to you. Right now, I'll put them over here. There's a lot of green in this one. And this is the day after I made this cane and sheet for the watercolor, okay? So this is the day after. It stayed overnight here. Just hung out with uh, all the other clays. And uh, anyhow, this is what it looks like. So what we're going to do is I rolled up these are uncooked little balls of clay and I used some whites and some of my scrap translucent and whatnot that I had hanging around and it was recommended in the tutorial that I viewed that we spoke about earlier that maybe you should have a white or translucent scrap clay to start with before you put on the veneer pieces for the watercolor. So that's where we're at at this point, okay? So, some of these pieces are, are larger than others. I'm going to move um, the already baked pieces out of the way so that I can work a little bit better, a little bit more. And like I said, I will bring that, I will bring the camera down to you, see a better view because my camera doesn't focus real well lately and I have to get either another one or fix that one or learn how to use it whatever the case might be so that said I'm going to start with a large one this is a large rolled up cross between uh, translucent and white whatever was hanging out over here now this is the alcohol inks that we used in the beginning of the video and the way that I'm going to do this is a little bit different than what Jessima does she tears her pieces off of in the sheets and um, stacks them now what's important to do here is to make sure you know you want that watercolor layered look and that is to make sure your piece is laying on top of another piece kind of stacked you know a little bit it's hanging over onto another piece and that's where you will get that effect now the uh, watercolor effect comes from the sheet itself and the translucent how she does it and really what she does is just pulls off these pieces like this and in a way, I can see why she would do that because there are different tones going on and you can kind of pick the tone that you want, the size that you want, and so on. But this is, this is the way she does it is she pulls them off and then picks them up and places them on the bead. Okay? So, either way you want to do it, it's the right way. This is a little bit on the larger size because I'm going to, you'll see me flatten it, uh, make it into a lentil bead, I think they're called, and then flatten it down. Now I think I have all the areas I'd like to have covered covered. So at this point you take it and you roll it just like you were going to roll it, <coughs> excuse me, into a uh, regular bead. And this, like I said, is a larger one, so this will be a vocal bead, most likely, for a necklace. And I just want to make sure I get as much blended. And just keep in mind, too, it's a very light, that you know, it's called water color for a reason. It's light in tone. I know there's some water colors that can be deep and dark, and that's great, but... I believe that that it's more or less because of its lightness and color. So hopefully you can see a little bit of what I'm doing here. You'll actually get to see the results of it. So that's a good thing. 
And the more you swirl this around, the more chance you have of getting a really good swirly swirl on the bead itself. Now this is blended in quite well. I see if you can see that there. All right. There's not a big swirl on it. Man, we're cooking. So as you can see, I'm fairly new at this. And I'm just trying to get that to swirl up a little bit for me and it's not doing what I want it to do. It'll still come out looking the way, you know, I want it to. But you want to get that, if you really want to get a swirl on, you got to keep on turning it. So, at this point, I'm just going to take it and I'm going to smush down on it. And like I said, this was a big, this is a big bead, big piece of clay. So, you're looking at this being your vocal. Now, there is a swirl in there, and let me see, not as much here. So now your, your decision pretty much lies with what side do you choose and what side you look better to you. And I'm going to do it like this and see, see what I can come up with as far as what I care for. And it's all, all in the designer's view now designer's eyes and you can get that around like that and push it down and it's already has a little bit of a beveled edge to it so Now what we'll do is an example of just a regular rounded bead. Now I'm going to make this bead the same way. This is a pretty big bead too, but it's alright. I mean, it could probably be one on its own. What I'm going to do here is, this is my cornstarch and that's my bead. And I'm just going to have that set in there, okay? Just like so. And I actually am going to use this bowl in my toaster oven. It worked fine for me the last time. I know a lot of people use foil pans and whatnot, but I'm going to use this. All right, everyone. I just want you to take a look at uh, my design before I put it together. And uh, I will give you some explanation, hopefully. I'll make sense, but I haven't taught this before, but I'm, and I'm not teaching it, I'm showing it. And uh, if you are interested in how I put this together, you need to take some beading classes and or you will have to at least watch some videos pertaining to that because there are some elements here that and some ways of using different things that um, you'll really need to focus on. And uh, I'm still focusing on just my necklace and, you know, how I'm going to put it together. So this is my vocal bead. These are my watermelon jade. And these are my watercolor beads that I made. These are spacer beads. Okay. Uh, these are my crimping beads. This is my bead cap over here. This is my beading wire here. This is my clasp. And these are my tools. I'm going to put together my uh, design here of my necklace that I made with my beads. It should be, come out to be around 21 to 22 
inches, maybe a little less, but I need when I want to put a necklace in this fashion together. And I have my crimping tool. And basically use the back one first. of uh, the uh, end clasp so I have that there so that part's done so I'm going to say like this is my end so I start with you know this this is the design that I will go with I will proceed to just string my beads because I've already laid them all out and I will go with the, what I have and um, that's something that you just need to do and these bead boards are the best for that and just so you can see what I'm doing here so really I think it's looking okay but uh, I can't find them so anyway uh, so I'm not really complaining about anything. Let's see here. I'm gonna make sure I get this one right. Yeah. I guess it doesn't matter, huh? Alright, so hopefully I cut enough. If not, I'm gonna have to take some off. Not difficult once you learn how to do it. Now, I hope that's it. I'm going to remove this. This is my necklace. And it has a little bit more play in it than I would like, but it's not tragic. So uh, I'll put it to you this way. I may or may not leave it that way. I will check it out. But that is basically how you would do this. And my um, bead cap has a, make everything nice and happy. So. Point what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and, and have it gla um, grasp a hold of this. If it fits, yes it does. Alright, so now I'm fine. Uh it's reversible as well. I like this side and uh, it works perfect. I don't think I'm gonna restring it. I mean So this is my completed project from the watercolor tutorial of uh, Jessima, which is Samantha, and also Turtle Soup Beads, who did a terrific job with her um, translucent cane. Those were the two polymer clay and then I beaded it to make this little necklace here 
and I actually like it. It's pretty nice. I like it. So, if you do like this video, please like it and share it and subscribe. Thanks.